Hi and welcome to MicroCap Tutorials. My name is Paul. Today we're going to be talking about default conditioning. Right here I have a MOSFET circuit, very simple low side um, end channel device, MOSFET or NMOS, and then I have a 1K resistor here and a 12 volt battery or 12 volt cell. So if I, if I run my simulation um, the way that I have it right now, I have some, uh, some pulse that's coming in. Oops, I need to apply the drive signal for that to happen. There we go. Okay, all right, so here we go, 12 volts. That's what my, my source is. Coming in at 12 volts, goes to zero, does it periodically, and uh, I get the output response, and you can see the uh, rising characteristics of the voltage and the decaying ca characteristics of the current through the, through the load resistor or through the, um, through the DUT device under test, which, which however you, you talk about it. 12 milliamps of current and it's periodic. So I can expect that the average current is gonna be somewhere around here because this is a pulse width modulation or duty cycle. But anyway, and that's that works great. But I, I don't necessarily know anything about the starting conditions of this circuit, especially if this is a prototype in the lab. So the there may be some charge here already from the last test or already from the last turn on cycle um, that may have never dissipated. And so this MOSFET would be on when I wanted it to be off or something like that. So in most cases, designers will put a default conditioning resistor of around 10K, maybe 10K to 100K is usually sufficient. And they will put this at the input of their MOSFET. Among other things, there's other things you can do like zeners and clamping and stuff. But today we're just talking about this. So right now, this is gonna make sure that this circuit is held to, um, is held to ground and any charge that exists here is going to be dissipated through the resistor all the way through the resistor and it may dissipate some heat but it's going to create a loop back to the source so that the charge never ends up building up here on the terminal enough to make a potential a voltage potential that's going to turn this on um, so but it doesn't affect the drive signal so as soon as i put the drive signal onto it uh, it, my behavior of the overall circuit is going to be the same. I still get my, my inputs here, and I still get my output voltages, and I still get the currents that go through the load. Now, there is a cost to doing default conditioning, um, because, like I said, the, the, it's going to create a loop, you know, a small little loop back to the source. Well, that means there's going to be some current, so as soon as there's 12 volts, enough to turn on this device. So whenever you wanted this device to be turned on, there's going to be some component of the current that's going to bleed out through that resistor. And if this is a 12 volt drive, then that's going to be 1.2 milliamps, so I'll show you that. Now, in order to see that, uh, if you, microcap takes the last value here, the last value. So this is essentially zero, right? So if I want something to observe something, I have to kind of change my window and go just slightly underneath it, uh, underneath the, the pulse window, so that I'm going to be observing 12 volts across that. So I can I can measure that here with my indication. So 12 volts here, and then I can look at the current. So that's that 1.2 milliamps that I'm losing. It's waste. Uh, so I want to try to capture that waste, especially if this circuit is on a cell or a battery or of some kind, because I don't want to... Um, I don't want to use up current when I don't have to. So one of the easy ways to do this is to just increase the scale uh, by an order of magnitude, just by 10. So I run the simulation again, and now it should be 120 milliamps, or I'm sorry, 120 uh, microamps of current uh, going through the device. So just by doing that, I consume much less power, you know, 1.44 milliwatts of power. Um, now there's an upper limit of this. I can't, I can change this to one meg. It is possible to do that, and I can I can reduce it even further. So I go here. Okay, it's only twelve microamps of current. That's pretty low leakage. That's pretty good, right there. So that you could do that. Uh, mega ohm resistors cost a lot, so you have to choose uh, do a cost estimate estimation of the resistor that you want to use here versus using a hundred K, which are extremely plentiful and extremely cheap. Uh, and then at some point, there's going to be some charge competition because this gate source is going to be in the range of 10, 10 mega ohm, something like that. And then now you have another path, maybe one mega ohm. So at some point, the charge is going to decide that it wants to go through uh, and bleed out through the MOSFET rather than bleeding out uh, through the this particular resistor you have designed for that purpose. So I would keep it below one meg so that you don't get that competition effect that occurs. But this is how you do default conditioning, and it's very useful, especially 
um, if you don't, if, if your load or your particular actuation is very sensitive. Like this could be a motor and it could be a surgery robot that's designed to, um, you know, to perform very complex and detailed circuitry for these servos or whatever. But if you don't know the default condition and this, this device starts to like skitter or shudder at turn on, well, okay, now you've hurt someone because now the motor responded differently than what you expected to as a result of your command signal. So that's why we do default conditioning, among other things. Um, there's other things you put here, like Zener diodes, and you can put capacitors that are going to increase the capacitance effect and some type of filtration. You can do stuff like that, and we'll talk about that in another video. But uh, thanks for watching today. I'll see you next